So remember that time that Michelangelo hung mattresses on the side of the bell tower at San Miniato Almate? Yeah, today, the answer to the question that we're thinking about today is unusual juxtapositions. <laughs> hey, good morning, folks. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeffo. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. You guys know me. I'm just a dude on a bike. I don't know nothing. Talking about how uh, I'm working to evolve as a filmmaker, as a poet, and as a human being because these things are interrelated. As much as getting to be on the ride with you this morning is interrelated to all of that. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. If this is your first time here, welcome to the ride. So, do you have a good weekend? Do anything special for Halloween? I was still seeing a lot of posts on the socials over the weekend for uh, people still Halloween partying, it looked like, which was super fun. A lot of maintenance going on this morning, maybe because it's kind of warm. It's like 34 degrees. Okay, comparatively warm for this time of day anyway. It's so nice to be out on a bicycle. Man, if you've got some pains and you're biking and like I've got this right hip thing going on, I mean, it's been going on for years. <laughs> Physical therapy, it's a lovely thing. Hopefully your insurance covers it. Mine supposedly does. We'll see. <laughs> so, this may be shocking to some people. It was kind of shocking to me because I thought I had seen it before, but I hadn't. Good morning, Talia. I miss you guys. This is day eight of the fast, so I haven't been drinking wine or anything in over a week now. I haven't been eating, drinking, nothing, man. With this lemonade concoction. It's so good. I'm feeling so good. Feeling focused again. Feel like I'm living my life again. I'm so grateful that I found this. Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer introduced me to it. It doesn't have the same mystic power for her that it does for me because, well, we're different people and different things work for us. That's the way that goes. Hey, good morning. You gotta find what works for you, folks. Hey, good morning. This podcast is just about how I'm finding my way through it. What works? <laughs> But if you've been with us for a while, <laughs> maybe some things that don't work, too. I'm just trying to be a human, man. Just trying to be a human. Trying to be a little monkey. Lose my tail. Fall out of the tree. Grow up. Bipedal. All right. So, the thing that many of you may not believe, because I am such a fan of cinema. I was going to say the history of cinema, but I guess... I'm a fan of all of it, a fan of all the films, you know? But uh, like poetry and music, I tended toward the surrealists, toward the experimenters, those who are on the fringe, and I'm working myself way back to the center here in the story, more, uh, you know, straight line narrative kind of things. And the thing is, I'd seen the second one years ago in Napa. I think Jennifer and I watched it. Maybe the first one wasn't available. It was a video store days, man. Go down to Peter's video off Imola, I think, in Napa. Yeah, we'll do a little wall ride today. Woo, baby. Yeah, anyway, the back is feeling good, so we can do the wall rides. Even though we're packed down, we're not going to go aggro on it. Got some trim up on the house this weekend and all that hammering standing on a ladder kind of tweaked my back again. I thought I was over. Then I did the uh, exercise. 
Good morning. I did the exercises that the physical therapist prescribed, and I wouldn't say that it felt better, but it felt stronger. Is that the way to say it? It felt supported again? So I didn't feel like I was going to fall in two. So great. I'm so, so very grateful for physical therapy. Thank you, whoever invented physical therapy. Shamanistic stuff. All right. So I'd never seen The Godfather. How do you like that? I thought I'd seen it, but I'd seen the second one. So we watched The Godfather on Saturday night. What a beautiful film. I mean, outside the violence, if you get past, if you get at what the film also encompasses, or rather, the mob story is just a part of the bigger story of like the Italian immigrant life in America at that time. Freaking fantastic. I was struck by a few things. Jennifer and I were talking yesterday morning at breakfast. I was drinking lemonade. She was having avocado toast. So good. I'm sorry, that's too much information, isn't it? I apologize. I don't want to make anyone salivate over the better things in life. <laughs> I know, it's very bourgeois of us. But the thing is, we're plant-based people. So the plants do us good. Thank you, Earth, for giving us plants. <laughs> I know, folks, I'm just feeling a little giddy today. Because I'm feeling better and my back is not hurting as much. But yeah, so The Godfather, the film. It is such a beautiful film. That wedding sequence at the beginning, how long does that last? 15, 20 minutes? We get to see it's all about family. The other thing that we were talking about before I got off on the avocado toast tangent, toast tangents, was uh, some of the phrases that came out of that film that weren't idiomatic or colloquial before that film. One of which is uh, leave the gun, take the cannoli, of course. Hey, coming up your front side. Leave the gun, take the cannoli, which is a super famous one, of course. Um, revenge is a dish best served cold, of course. I'm not into that one so much. That one doesn't strike me as much as leave the gun, take the cannoli. I mean, in what situations in your life have you been in a situation where that's the advice that someone gave you? Yeah, you see where we're headed now, huh? <clears throat> and then, of course, our little tease at the beginning, going to the mattresses, which in mob movies in America means going to war. But evidently, back in around 1530, Charles V, <laughs> Charles V, man, and uh, Medici Pope, what's his name? Medici, Medici Pope Clement the Seventh. So a pope and Charles V, they siege to Florence. And now why a holy man would take siege on a city is a topic for another, another day. Actually, I'm not interested in that topic. It's simple, it's human greed. All right, I guess we covered that. <laughs> Something about that unusual juxtaposition there was interesting to me. A pope and a king taking siege on Florence. And they were using cannons, and of course, cannon technology was not sophisticated in 1530. I'm not guessing. I mean, God. We didn't invent the rifle until, what, the 1800s? <laughs> I'm sorry, the repeating rifle. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Ethan. I could hear Ethan and his history knowledge reminding me, no, they've been around a while. Okay, thank you, bro, you're right. But basically, the cannons were shooting at this bell tower at, uh, they're in Florence. 
and Michelangelo, the artist, they asked him, he said, what can we do about this? And he said, well, let's put mattresses on the outside to protect the side of the, the bell tower from the cannon fire, which if they're not super sophisticated weapons, that kind of makes sense. A mattress might work. So in, according to Italian folk memory, that is the origination of the phrase going to the mattresses, which of course in The Godfather translates to we're going to war, right? So in all of mob movies. So that's kind of, I thought that was kind of interesting. To learn that. The other thing that I loved about this film, there are two scenes that are horrible. One makes the movie worth it. The first one is when Michael Corleone's exiled in Italy, he's married to Apollonia, and she is just stoked on driving. And we hear the famous Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, Saturday. Like, I don't need to learn English. I already know English. I want to learn how to drive. That youthful gusto that she had. Oh, I forgot why we don't ride over here because it's so bumpy. We'll get back over on the trail. Hey, good morning. And uh, they're on their way to leave to go to the airport so that Michael can get back to the family for his brother's death. To deal with his brother's death. <laughs> and she starts up the car and it explodes. Hey. Now, if that scene were made today, we'd see an explosion and probably a crossfade or maybe a jump cut. We'd see the explosion and then we'd see Michael's face. His reaction to seeing, witnessing his relatively new wife being killed on account of him. But instead, what Coppola did is the car blows up and the camera remains static. And we can even see her leg hanging out of the car while it's burning. It is a horrible, horrible scene. Death comes to us all. And we can't look away. We can't avoid it. He holds on that for a long ass time. Man, people don't hold like that. People don't make us look at the result of violence in films like this. Uh, today, I mean, today we don't see the actual carnage or result of violence so much in films. We see it through story or through exposition later, but we don't hold on it in the way that Coppola did in that scene. That blew me away. It was like, wow, that takes guts, you know? I'm sure a studio today would trim an hour and 20 minutes out of that film, make it about an hour and 40. That would be a shame because all that space in there it ends up meaning so much. The other scene that really knocked me over was uh, Vito Corleone in the tomato garden or right next to the tomato garden with his grandson. Grandson was watering the tomatoes. Vito was hanging out, just chatting with him. Then he uh, puts crackers in his mouth like he's a monster, which I thought was interesting. And then, uh, and then he goes over, and scares his grandson, and then it's like, no, 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 man, we're playing a game here. Which I think there's something of the whole story of. Vito's life in that becomes a monster and then kind of wants to become an innocent child again and then they play in the tomato garden and at this point in the film we know that he's about to die so this was fascinating to me because hey good morning coming around your left this was fascinating to me because I was consciously aware that this this has to be the scene where we where he dies and he is just jumping around, playing with his grandson in a tomato garden. So in a way he has been, he has gotten his life back. Hey, coming around your right. 
And again, we hold on the scene. It's like a, what, three or four minute scene? And we hold on that. We see him in that garden, just playing with his grandson, knowing that he's gonna die. And he's knowing that he's gonna die. And Coppola makes us conscious of the fact that this is going to happen now. I was just blown away by that. That scene made the whole film, made all the violence, all the contrivance, all of it makes sense. It's like, okay, Don Corleone dies too peacefully, oddly enough. <laughs> he does maybe not get what's coming to him in the way that revenge thinks, served cold. <clears throat> but in the way that uh, all men, all people, sorry, <laughs> all people must die. Anyway, that scene really, really hit me. It was that unusual juxtaposition, again, of him being in a tomato garden, which is, of course, Italian. You know, Italians brought tomatoes into this country and people, like, a lot of communities thought that uh, the tomatoes were poisonous and that the Italians were given them to them to poison them and it wasn't some sort of a lovely gift, you know, along with, like, lasagna and pizza, marinara sauce. So, pretty fascinating stuff. Enjoyed the film thoroughly. I would love to watch it again someday soon. Before I forget all of it. Before I forget all of it. I'm not gonna forget it because it had all these unusual juxtapositions. That's the question. What makes a memorable scene or line? Leave the gun, take the cannoli. You're never gonna forget that because it's unusual. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take that away as if I want people to remember me, I'm going to be unusual, and I'm going to be me, which is, of course, unusual because I'm the only one that can be me, right? Isn't that true? I think that's true. So, hey, folks, happy Monday. I hope that your week is off to a good start. Hey, folks, happy Monday. I hope your week is off to a good start. Um, thanks for riding with me this morning. Hey, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Um, you know, whatever your bike is, get out on it. Um, I hope that you get a chance to engage with it. I really appreciate you riding with me this morning. Uh, oh, I'm going to take a couple of days off. Um, we're, tr we're doing some things at the end of this week and early next week. So I may not be able to ride with you the next couple of rides. Um, but keep your ride going. Let me know what's happening. Um, I'm, I'm kind of moving everything back to my Jeffrey Oliver account. Um, on socials and website so kind of moving away from the morning ride podcast.com it'll all push you over to the right place but um just so you know uh at j-e-f-f-o-f-f-e-j -F -F -E on instagram and twitter if you got thoughts hit me up i'd love to know what your ride is i'd love to see photos send me some videos let's talk you want to ride with me like really actually ride with me on a bicycle some morning in the cold hit me up hey folks enjoy the ride it's the only one we get thanks for riding with me